Yes, yes, yes. Welcome to Cyber Safety Net. Stay safe online, episode 159. Get the new Stop Ransomware Guide. Yeah, Stop Ransomware. Today, CISA, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the National Security Agency, and the Multi-State Information Sharing and Analysis Center published an updated version of the Stop Ransomware Guide. I will put a link to this free PDF in the description. I'm recording on a Thursday. This was published on a Tuesday, two days ago. And CISA is the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. Today's presentation is sponsored by my fourth book, How Hacks Happen. In How Hacks Happen, there are two personas. There's me, Mark, the good guy, who wants to protect you. And then there's Brad Cracker, the bad guy, who wants to rip you off. And if you're learning about stopping ransomware, then that's going to make life a little more difficult for Brad and the other hackers out there. Back in episode 102, I introduced the CIA triad, or the Confidentiality and Security Availability Triad. Since we're talking about ransomware making the data on your computers unavailable, I think we're in the availability domain again. There is a lot of good content in this document, and it's about 30 pages long. And like I said, it's a free PDF. I will put the link in the description. I pulled three good tidbits from pages five and seven, and I'll be making more videos with more content. Number one, maintain and regularly update golden images. Windows calls these system image backups. Number two, retain backup hardware to rebuild systems. And I'll be talking about that. And three, ensure all on-premises devices are properly configured. And I'll be talking about Windows Remote Desktop. And here's a spoiler alert. I'm, uh, I don't like it. Number one, system image backups, which this document called Golden Images. I'm going to stop sharing the screen. You need a system image backup of all your computers. And of course, update these regularly. That's because if you get ransomware, you're going to lose access to the server and you need to get access restored. You can do backups on one of these. This is a Western image passport drive. It holds four terabyte of data. And I paid about $110. When you install Windows on a computer, the install wizard creates a partition, then it creates your C drive, then another partition. So if you have to restore, then you need all three of these back. That's why you do a system image backup onto one of these or the golden image, like what the Stop Ransomware Guide calls it. When you restore, you'd be restoring onto another computer altogether. And that would be a spare server that you have sitting in your office. Why keep a spare server? Well, you keep a spare server for the exact same reason that you keep a spare tire in your trunk. In case one of the primary wheels or tires is unavailable. Now, I know a lot of people say, if I got a server, I'm going to be using it. I can't just let it sit in a corner, unplugged, getting dusty. I can sympathize with that. What you can do is have a server, a physical server in your server room or wherever you choose to put it, not in the kitchen, somewhere else that's a little more secure. Then you can run multiple virtual machines. And I say virtual machines and people go, what? Well, here's one good way to think about virtual machines. When you launch Microsoft Word, you can have multiple Word documents open at the same time. That's because Microsoft Word supports multiple documents. Well, if you have a machine that's pretty powerful, probably a server class, then you can run a hypervisor. And the one that comes with Windows is called Hyper-V. Then you run multiple virtual machines on top of Hyper-V because Hyper-V is the foundation. If you've got enough memory, storage, and CPU power, then you can have multiple virtual machines. But of course, if you're talking about lots of memory, lots of storage, lots of power, 
time to open the checkbook. But you need to have some kind of disaster recovery plan in place because you never know when you're going to get hit by ransomware or a fire or a flood or a theft or an earthquake. Have backup hardware. Number three is uh, hardening workstations. And here I'm going to talk about port 3389, which is remote desktop. And I'm going to share the screen because I have some pretty nice captures here. Back when Windows XP came out, we had this feature called Remote Desktop, which everybody loved, including me. And it was free. The general idea is that you could be at home, you could be in some random hotel, you could be in a library, you could be in a coffee shop, and then get remote access to another computer anywhere in the world, as long as that computer had good internet access. Windows Remote Desktop, it runs on port 3389. Now in this screen capture, I have the local computer, which is running Windows 10. I can tell because the icons on a toolbar start way over at the left. And it's connecting to another computer at another location. This one is running Windows 11. I can tell because the toolbar icons are centered. Super easy to use does not take much to figure out that you're on another computer here, but that other computer is within a window here on your native computer. Just like I was talking about Microsoft Word and multiple documents, here I have my local computer and my target computer within a window. That concludes the good news with remote desktop. Now the bad news is, I don't like it because it's a security risk. And that's because when you expose your computer to the internet, hackers will find you because they know that port 3389 is Windows Remote Desktop and they'll start pounding away. They'll want a brute force attack with a password list and pound away trying to guess passwords, knowing or having faith that they will stumble across a password that works. Then they get access to your computer and they're on your network. The hackers usually rent space and time on a botnet. A botnet is a series of computers that are programmed to carry out a consistent task. In this case, they'll attack a computer with a remote desktop available. When I look through logs, I see IP addresses that I can resolve them to the source. Sometimes I'm able to see a country. Sometimes I can go a little bit further and see a city. Sometimes these are America haters, sometimes not. But these are all botnets that are pounding away at your computer because you have port 3389 open and hackers have found you. It's just a matter of time before they stumble across a password that works. The screen capture at the bottom is from Windows Event Viewer. And I've documented up to 11 attempts per second of a botnet trying to gain access to a computer by running a password list, a brute force attack. They pound away, they pound away, they pound away, they pound away. They have faith that they'll eventually stumble across a password that works. That is why I turn off port 3389. On Windows, remote desktop is off by default. So if you use this functionality, somebody intentionally turn it on. If you're on a network, port 3389 is not granted access by default on a firewall. Somebody intentionally opened access to port 3389. We call this port forwarding, sometimes it's called a pinhole. But it's not on by default. Somebody went out of their way to turn it on and make this available. Let's recap the first three points from the Stop Ransomware Guide. Number one, maintain and regularly update golden images. Number two, retain backup hardware. If you don't have the resources for backup hardware because you don't want a server sitting in the corner doing nothing, then at least make sure you have 
a server that can run multiple VMs or virtual machines. And number, number three, ensure all on-premise devices are properly configured. But Mark, I like my remote desktop. There are other services that are a lot more secure than port 3389 and Windows Remote Desktop. Go to my PC. PC Anywhere, I know it's been around for a while. Log me in. Those are some of the big names, but there are a lot of services out there that will let you get remote access. You know what? I'm done. I know your time is valuable. I know there are other places you could have been, but you chose to be here. You chose to listen to me. Mark Anthony Jimanos introduced the new version of this top brand smart guide. I touched on only three items today from pages five and seven, but there's a lot more in the pipeline. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching. Good day, everybody.